James Massey is the Managing Director of Facilities Management for MRI Software, a global name in real estate technology. In the second part of our interview with James, we discuss the post-COVID workplace, net zero targets, and IoT. In a post-COVID world, how could employers encourage staff to come back to the office and what is the role of an FM in this process? I think this world post-COVID now is people expect more from the offices. They expect to have hotel-style facilities. You know, the office that we're in now in, in London and King Street, you know, it's a nice building, it's got nice air conditioning, good lighting, a good coffee machine, good Wi-Fi, etc. I think all these things now have almost become expectations of people to come back. I think the last thing you'd want to do is to come back to an office that either unventilated or has poor facilities in terms of coffee or drink making facilities and, and food preparation etc also potentially poor Wi-Fi and all the other things that go along with that because people would much rather stay at home because the facilities are better in fact at home and I think facilities managers play a huge role in that to make the place the best that it can be to give the best experience once you're inside this particular sort of facility you know, to make sure everything works make sure the lights work make sure that the phones work make sure the IT kit works because Otherwise, people are just not going to want to come back to the, back to the office. Um, and I think there's a huge encouragement for that because I think people thrive better. I think people thrive better in connected communities, but also in better connected office spaces. And, you know, we've been on a big push to bring our staff back to the office. That's going well um, because we've made it a place that people want to come to. People want to be feel welcome. They want to ensure that we've got all the right facilities here. And I think the FM uh, managers play a big part in that. How does MRI help organizations to hit their net zero targets? Ourselves as, a, as an organization have, have fairly stringent or, or robust objectives to try to get to net zero carbon emissions. And I think it's in everybody's interest to do this for the, for, the, for the greater good of the planet. Where we are in terms of technology enablement is, as we've spoken about earlier on this in this interview, is around digitization of services, it's around bringing data sets together to minimize potential journeys, it's around migration to cloud compute to take those things from being on-premise, etc., and saving energy costs. But it's also about through the use of our energy monitoring solutions. So in the building that we're in now, we've deployed our energy monitoring software. We can see very quickly exactly how much energy energy each floor is using down to five minute intervals we can start to then subset that data out and go well actually based on demand that we also have in here now based on demand based on footfall based on uh, desk booking etc we can actually look at the whole energy pitch now start to say, well actually this floor is costing this much money and is it actually worth it would it be more financially viable and therefore lead into a carbon reduction program to start to close down certain floors in this building when the capacity is lower than what it needs to be so I think MRI can help by you know, by having those conversations about what is a good workplace environment or a good FM area to be able to put energy management into. What can that energy management start to deliver? Uh, not just from a financial cost saving, but of course naturally born out of that is a carbon reduction because of course the reduced use of energy. Also looking at things like IoT and energy can start to give you an idea about how this building is operating outside of core working hours. You know, we're recording this interview mid-afternoon, which is great because the building is fairly occupied. But at three o'clock tomorrow morning, how is this building performing? And our IoT sensors and our energy monitoring platform continually run 24 7, 365. So we can build a picture exactly how this asset is performing even when we're not here. So all those things that tied together can all help organize it to reduce net zero carbon. How is IoT expected to change the landscape of maintenance? IoT is a great technology. I think it, it's so powerful and so flexible. It can it can drive behavioural change in terms of, as opposed to doing a maintenance cycle on just a standard repeat frequency, we can start through things based upon usage. For example, how many times is the door in this room that we've been in uh, being open and closed in a day? How many times is the toilet uh, or the corridor being flushed? How many hours has the LED bulb above our heads been switched on for? How long has the heating ventilation been running for? And IoT sensors can start to gather all those data things. I think transformationally, taking PPM, so plan preventive maintenance cycles, from being based purely on a, a standard set of terms, so service this thing or clean the thing or whatever, every so many hours, days, weeks, months, etc. Let's do it based on usage. I think IoT has a huge potential to play there around that uh, around that scenario. I think what's very important though is that IoT must integrate into the FM solutions. 
some of the journey we've been on in the last 12 months to two years. So, so an event or an alarm or something happening in the IoT ecosystem make it report something back into the FM system because if those two things become disconnected data sets or individual data silos, that's where we get problems. It's very, very, very important that an IoT sensor can connect automatically through the hyper-connected ecosystem back into the FM system to make something happen. So if this room, for example, became too hot, make sure the FM system knows it's too hot, make sure the people in charge of facilities know that. The next dimension to that, though, then, is going to be IoT, FM, and then building management system. So can the FM system tell the building management system to do something about that? I think it's going to change the, the landscape of maintenance massively, uh, and it's a, it's a journey we're very, very excited to be part of. In this hyper-connected world, how can we ensure there is no risk involved. If something goes wrong, how does technology help? There's always risk in everything. You know, nothing's ever risk-free, of course, as we as we all understand. I think what is important though is, is understanding that risk. I think hyper-connected technologies such as AI, integrated BMS systems, um, you know, artificial intelligence, things like ChatGPT, etc., all carry a native risk to them. But then again, so does the human body. The humans themselves can make mistakes. I think what what is always critical though is to understand what that risk categorization looks like. I think where we go to technology, you know mandating data collection so ensuring the fact that the absolute key ingredients of this program this ppm whatever needs to be are collected is very 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 important don't leave certain things to assumption or guesswork make sure that see people are almost forced to collect this information and forced on this particular journey you know i think that and then the digital journey is key to make sure that people have the right data mandate to be able to enter those things to try to mitigate risk i think there's always got to be human eyes over something i think i think a fully automated system whilst great I think carries risk in its own right I think there's always going to be that manual checkpoint you know again I think that's where you know, we talked before about data silos and, and, and data isolation I think that's where interconnected data sets brought together should hope to mitigate some of those key risks um, but actually if it's done right and it's got the right risk mitigation factors around it and it's got the right business intelligence management information etc around it these systems can be absolutely wonderful things that can make that can not only make people's lives better in general but also drive us to all the other things we said around you know carbon reduction cost saving efficiencies and making the place a better place to be are facilities managers digitally attentive and how does technology enable them to become digitally attentive what's key around digitally digital attentiveness is what does that really mean? It means the fact that somebody who needs to run to interact with an organization has a digital way to do that. You know, we all live on our phones now. We all expect to do everything online. You know, you know, we're sat in a room now here, you know, with you know, your interview guys be relatively on a phone, we've got cameras and everything around us, because everybody lives in this digitally connected world, you know. And I think what people expect now is everything high availability on the six and a half inch screen that sits, that sits in your hands. Um, but also in minimal clicks you know nobody ever struggled to buy something from, from amazon or from ebay or log into facebook or twitter or any of those things it's three clicks or less generally to do things if you look at amazon you, you click you buy you purchase jobs done so minimal clicks i think is important i think i think fm providers have a have a duty to become as digitally attentive as possible uh, i think that means putting self-service solutions in people's hands i think it means putting you know continual updates into people's hands i think it means giving a very very good rich digital journey journey and a good rich digital experience because that's how we all live you know nobody nowadays wants to pick up the phone and speak to somebody they expect to download an app log into the app within three or four clicks if that they expect those things to happen in everything in banking and utilities in you know purchasing a car if you want to buy a car online you can literally buy a car online now and the car will turn up at your house very very straightforward you think back five ten years ago that would have been impossible to do people can buy brand new new built houses now online without ever even seeing it and I think where FM providers now and FM managers have a role now is to give people that digital experience. That's got to be a good, rich, repeatable, wanting to come back to digital experience as well. So uh, I think there's a lot to it. Uh, and again, I think everything we've spoken about tied together around data, around IoT, I think all needs to be brought together into a, into a single digitized platform for, for various digital stakeholders. Mm -hmm.